Welcome in then to the latest edition of Extra Time. I'll tidy everything up, Craig, because I know you get angry when I have papers everywhere, but there was a hey, lot to talk about today. What about Notch County? What about Notch County? Nottingham, the greatest city on the planet. What we didn't show in the highlight was that they subbed the goalkeeper in uh, for the penalty shootout, the second string Notch County goalkeeper, who made an unbelievable save with his feet. It was a brilliant. Oh, God, I'm not having it. Roll it back. Let's go back and do that again. <laughs> Let's go back. Uh, yeah, and what about the Notts County player who tried the Penenka to win it all? Thank goodness oh. that didn't prove to be costly. And for the young viewers, Panenka was for the Czech Republic. It was all about European Championship back in 76. Uli Hernes from West Germany. He shot the ball so high over the pitch, that they, uh, over the goal, that they're still looking for the ball. And Panenka doing a Panenka. People know 76. what Panenka is, Jan. People, young people, people know what Panenka people, is. People, you are the host. You are the host of a show. You have different ages. There is nothing. They just think that the Panenka is a Panenka. We have to give Anthony Panenka, a Czech Republic legend and a rapid Vienna legend, their praise that he deserves. I think Gab went to... Gab interviewed him, I think. The article's on the website from a few years ago. I seem to remember reading that. The demographic of people watching this show is variable, so you have to cover all bases. Yeah, but I think everyone knows yeah. what Penenka yeah. is, but Jan's obviously wanting to anyway, give Penenka some love. It just shows you the confidence of players these days. One, we're talking about a player from Notch County, I can't remember his name, who's playing in the fifth tier of English yeah. football. Yeah. And two, we're in a knockout relegation, or sorry, promotion game at Wembley, <laughs> yeah. and he's doing a Penenka. Yeah. I would never have done that even in a normal game. Yeah. It's just, it's a different stratosphere now that people are even want to try that. There you are then, Notts County, both Nottingham teams then in, in proper football. That'd be good, be good for your house, renting that Why, out. Are they all going to stay there? <laughs> Let's get everybody in. <laughs> Cram everybody in. Yeah. For all, of all the teams in the championship, oh, we know what the answer to this is, Anne. For all the teams in the championship playoff, who would you most like to see go up? Sunderland, Luton, Coventry or Borough? I've told you already, I've told you already, Sunderland beating Luton, they will... I, I kind of have a charming feeling for Luton because if they go up, yeah. they will have a look at the home ground of Luton, who is just... If you go wrong, you go into a guy living next door. I mean, <laughs> if that is the gate of that stadium. The VIP at Luton Town is a terrace, a balcony on the sides. I love playing there. I got a feeling that it's going to be Sunderland, Middlesbrough, that is going to be game of the season. And for Kay and myself, oh, we man. just have to pray to the mighty Lord that Borough will beat Sunderland. Yeah, and we're also praying to the mighty Lord that it's gone the other way. <laughs> yeah, because we'd have to hear about it all the time. <laughs> Luton were top tier when I was growing up, because they had the plastic pitch, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. I, I, we, we QPR. I, I was a youngster. I was youngster at Chelsea then, so I wasn't in the first team. They were in the second tier then, but we used to go and play there in the reses, the reserves, and it was the uh, that plastic pitch. Oh my God. As soon as you slide tackle or go to ground, oh, you would be like oh God, skinning yeah, your knees. And, and then you'd get, uh, after you'd put your clothes on, it'd be sticking to it, it was oh, horrible. Oh, I mean, oh, and, oh. Uh, and also, the way the ball was bouncing, it just, it was so, well, it was artificial. It's hard to gauge. Yeah. Did you know what our producer did yesterday? Played badminton? No, he was cutting his hedge and somehow cut his leg. <laughs> Oh. You know he's a hypochondriac. <laughs> I know he's a hypochondriac. I'm surprised he's here today. <laughs> I know, I know. He's huh? hobbling around everywhere. He only come in today because he was running that Portuguese stuff. On the show. <laughs> that was it, that was it. How do you cut your a head? I don't, yeah, a head's true. I don't know what he was doing. He should never, ever be in charge of, <laughs> of something of anything. as dangerous as that. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Craig, do you think Nottingham Forest would have done better this season if they'd kept the squad together that got them promoted rather than buying so many new players? The squad that got them promoted had a lot of loan players. Right. So that couldn't have happened. Uh, no. Uh, some of the guys that got them up, like Cook and McKenna at the back. Cook has been a, a good all-round pro, uh, but his career's winding down. And McKenna came from Aberdeen and he's a championship player. And you can't really go up with championship defenders and stay up. So I don't agree with how many players they've brought in. But they had to bring a certain amount in because, you know, that squad last year, as I said, had some loan players and some guys that were good in the championship and not good enough to play in the Premier League. So, yeah, they had to sign. Just, 
I think it's been a little scattergun, or a lot, but uh, yeah, I think they had to spend money. How is Dan coping with Southampton's relegation to the Championship officially confirmed You know, today? I tipped that at the start of the season. You did tip it? I did yes. tip it. Yeah, you said you can only be a feeder club for so long. And I actually thought point. Ralph Hasenhutl over the years there did a tremendous job. Yeah. I, I did. And I think it was a classic case of people thinking the grass is always greener. Uh, and I know there was some horrendous performances within his period getting walloped by nine and all that. But I think with what he was working with, he got more out of that squad over two or three years, or maybe longer, than should have happened. And that's why at the start of this season, I thought it can't, it can't keep continuing mm. to bring in poorer quality players, sell better players, and expect to get the same results. So it's a shame. I mean, is that the first? I don't remember them being relegated. They've not been relegated from the Premier League. Have yeah, they? yeah, they got relegated. They went all the way down to League Two and then came all the way back up. What recent in the last? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? yeah, yeah. I didn't realise There that. you go. Uh, so there's, there's life in them, yeah? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's fine. Uh, Jan, has Erling Haaland hit his ceiling already? If not... You never answered the question. What, how am I doing? How well, it's because you it? interrupted and gave us a big long lecture about Ralph well, Hossett. I, I knew your uh, answer was going to be boring. <laughs> there you what go, then. So you usurped it by an even more boring answer. Well, of course. <laughs> that is what we do. Jan, has Erling Haaland hit his ceiling already? If not, where can he get better? Well, in terms of goals, I, I don't think we should... Uh, it, expect that he would get over 50 goals every season, although Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo have done that. But I follow this young kid and he's developing all the time. I think the game against Arsenal, that was the best game he've had this season. He could have had four or five. Uh, he's holding up his involvement in the game. Real Madrid game, he was back to not having that many touches again. But still, that game against Arsenal just show you the future Erling Haaland. He can also getting better at his heading. He's been a lot of better. He's been a lot better doing that. He's scoring more goals with but with, with his uh, strength with his uh with his height, he will end up scoring a lot more goals. I think there will be you will see Manchester City as well will develop more into getting more crosses in for him. I think that is a part of the evolution at Manchester City. So, in terms of goals, I I think that 50 won't be the average. Uh, but he will score unbelievable many goals. I, I we have to use my unbelievable trademark there, Dan, <laughs> because th this is unbelievable. But in terms of development as a football player, I think he will only get better. Wednesday. Was that an American accent then? Did I? You had a little bit of American accent. Tomato. <laughs> One, I got told off of my mates in Nottingham for saying tomato. I just got, it just came out. It oh, came no. out. Wow. They all stood up at the table and went, it's tomato! Well. Wednesday, on a serious note. Right. <laughs> all Haaland's goals this year. How many did he get in that Leipzig game again? Yeah. Six. Six, five? Five, four. Five. 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 They were Four's all great five. and all these goals have been terrific. But he really could, if he hasn't already, punch his ticket to the big time to start them. If he wants to be obviously supplied, and he was the guy that obliterates Real Madrid and takes City to the final. This is his biggest stage. I don't care where he's played. This is his biggest stage so far this Wednesday. And he was a bit quiet in the first leg and it ne not necessarily wasn't all his fault, to be quite frank with you. And he had two defenders breathing down his, breathing down his neck and were very physical with him. But boy, you know, I would say he would give up a bunch of that, whatever, what's he scored? 47, 48? 51. 51, same thing. 51. I would say he'd give up a bunch of them, 15 of them if he was to obliterate Real Madrid. So it's his, but, it's but his I, big stage. Yeah. What are you laughing at? <laughs> no, I'm not laughing. No, I'm, I'm not talking laughing, to him. Oh, oh, you're oh, no. talking about that. But, <laughs> I, but I think that is fair, but I think that is also, Erling has said that in interviews, and I think that was a very mature interview where he said, I'm just here to win titles, not to... I mean, he will love scoring goals as any goal scorer, any football player, any human being will do, but he knows that is what it's all about. He also knows that the critics, if they only win the, the, the league, they will say, well, they won the league last year. But I mean, the, uh, 
the big thing if if to get into the Champions League final and win the final. You know, it's all about that. Can Erling Haaland clip that up? That he's only here to win titles and post it down to North London to oh, Harry Kane. To Harry Kane. Milan. But, 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 but. What's wrong? What are you smirking at? I'm not smirking. Somebody's talking in your ear. No one's talking in my ear. No, I'm just smirking. Just... <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> is this a cut in the hedge again? <laughs> no. Milan players went to talk to the ultra supporters after the loss against Spezia, Jan. When you played, did you have to interact with your supporters after a terrible loss? Yes. And is it fair that players have to do this after matches? Well, some well, I'm ambivalent to to this kind of thing because sometimes you're just standing there. I remember once when we played Ulm, that was the last game before Christmas uh, for Eintracht Frankfurt. I went over to them, and let's put it this way: there was thing spitting, there was thing throwing at us, uh, and the the fans blocked it, uh, our bus when we left the stadium. That happened a second time as well, and I had a manager, Felix Margat, he took over the club. They were all standing there hammering on the bus, and he said to me, Jan, can you go out and talk to them? So sometimes, wow. but I managed, I managed to get them away, but I, sometimes I, do they have the right to kind of swear, to bully the players? There was also in Berlin, there was a big thing that there was a guy that took his shirt away. There was a big discussion in German football. They took his shirt away and they just threw it away. So sometimes I think we take it too far. Mm. Uh, sometimes the fans have the right, they have the f right to they pay their tickets and blah, 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 blah. And they can swear at any players. And if any player then turn around with a small body language, they should be but like suspended for two or three games. So I got mixed emotions about this. I'm not 100% sure. And I think that sometimes the players do it too much. I, I have to be honest with you. I don't think you need to go out and talk to them, but supporters are well within the rights as long as it's not physical to wait. Yeah, fair. To wait outside a, a stadium after a game and voice their opinion. If you have to walk to your car as you used to do, and there was times we wished there was an underground car park, particularly at Celtic, and there wasn't. We used to park in the old school, which was a hundred yard walk from the main gate, and trust me, they were waiting for you. Right. And you want to go and play at Celtic when things are going badly. I mean, quite lucky we had a good time there, but there was times during the period of three years there was some bad results, and, and you laugh about it now, but you know, I've told you this, you boys, the boys would be in the players' lounge with the families and they'd be sending the security out to have a look <laughs> to see how many's there. Yeah. And the security boy would go back in and go, they're still there, wow. they're waiting on you, and they'll wait because they, they want to get their frustrations out to you. And it's not nice, but you have to endure it, you know? Uh, similar but, topic, but I think yeah. the violence, now I'm just saying that, that violence is the limit here. Right? Yeah, I remember yeah. also back in Germany, I, or, or violence also physical on your cars. I remember when we lost the way for Frankfurt, we had a terrible period. We got a report that the fans were going at our cars. We had an away game. So they have found the cars and the police had to go out to protect the cars. Yeah. So it's all kind of thing. At Schalke once, this is some years ago, they were running after the players uh, from the training ground, going back to the dressing room and the player, players had to escape. And I don't think that is in, in the mandate of being a fan, but I'm, I'm with Craig, you have to be there you have to talk with them and sometimes i think the clubs make it more difficult for themselves because you could organize these kind of 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 of, of meetings with the fans that that is much appreciated and i think that the club should do that more how would you cope with it I, I, I wouldn't. Did you crumble? I would crumble straight away. Do you think I was shouting at you? <laughs> it's, it's interesting you were talking about with the difference between dressing rooms before and after, because obviously Solskjaer making reference to the fact that players are very different now and you have to treat them different and referring to them as snowflakes. Like that, mentally, is something that I couldn't even contemplate. And it must have been so strange for you guys to see colleagues around you crumble under, because you must have seen players who were great yeah. on the pitch. But then yeah. you, you have this kind of, like use the word bullying, Jan, where it was almost like, 
anything goes in the dressing room. You can call somebody anything, you can treat them however you want because the excuse is it's motivation. You're gonna make them better. I'm gonna make you a stronger character. But you must have seen yeah. so many, like in Chelsea, you're 16. Getting shouted at when you're 16 must be just horrible, like hundreds of miles away from home. Yeah, and, but see, I looked at it back then as, and, and what happened at Chelsea happened at other clubs. It was 1980s management styles. Now, there's been some issues at Chelsea over the years, legally, about that, uh, historically, in that period I was there. Uh, but I didn't see it, and, and those, were, those were allegations of racism, mm. but I, I, I saw the way me and one or two others were treated as just how you were treated back in the day. Right. Is you either dealt with it or you crumbled. Now, looking back, you, you just couldn't talk to youth team players in that manner anymore. You, ju you just can't. And so it, it is difficult. And a lot of guys, a lot of guys crumbled. I mean, we had a lot of, you know, we didn't have really what we would consider foreign guys in that you have at clubs now from all around the world. It was English boys, Scottish boys, Irish boys, Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, and Wales. And some of those boys got so upset and, and, and and, and couldn't handle it. They just wanted to go back to, to their own countries, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and they were sort of weeded out for want of a better terminology. Uh, but again, that's the, that's the way you were screamed at back then. Yeah, see, I, couldn't, I wouldn't be able to take it. Like, but Dan, yeah, yeah, if I... Yeah. See, I, I had I all the did, skill, did it. all the quality. That's yeah. the problem. <laughs> You're just, but, just but like I did, it's out of that. But I, I did this uh, uh, on the show when I talked about it, and I said that in the 90s, sometimes we are now former players sitting in the TV studios talking about this time there when we had great proper managers. Uh, I had one manager in a three minute speak because I got a young player uh, apprentice to count it. He said the F word 51 times uh, when he talked to the, uh, the, his uh, half time analysis. I've seen players, I saw a player in my playing days, a manager came in to him. This player was crying in the shower. He was crying. And I said, because it was too late and you had all this kind of fine system, but, but it finally found out that he was a betting guy. He had his own problem. I, I told the manager to sort of uh, to see him because I could only do as a teammate. I could go into him and try to, 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 to talk to him. And he went in and swore big time at him, bullying him. I'm not want to take this all the way, but this player is not more uh, around. I mean, for different reasons. And one of the main reasons is that he was bullied. And I think that we should stop uh, to romanticize this 90s, that we had the great coaches, that everybody needed a hand air dryer. The people you are speaking to in the studios, being in America, Norway, Germany, or UK, wherever, we are the ones who went through this. We are the ones who survived this. Mm. There is a lot of great footballers that will bullied the end of their career. Just briefly before we, because it's, uh, we want to go back to Celtic, but I think it's a good club, or Scottish football, Rangers and Celtic, I think it's good clubs to sort of analyse that point. There's been a lot, people say, oh, go to Scotland, Celtic, Rangers, easy. That's absolute rubbish. There's been a lot of, of better players than me and others. There's been a lot of really, really good players will take my former club Celtic, have gone there and failed. And they haven't failed because of talent. They failed because the pressure was just so immense mm. that they couldn't produce the things they'd been producing at the previous clubs. And that's a huge part of it. How you deal with 60, 70,000 every other week screaming at you if things are going wrong. If Rangers are romping away with the league, you're getting it home and away. And you get no respite when you go to Aberdeen three hours away and Dundee United and all these other teams. Because 10,000 of them travel, not 1,500, yeah. 10,000. So it's weekend and it's week out. But it's not even week, it's every day, isn't and, it? And because like, it, like going out shopping yeah, or yeah. doing things like that. And, and people don't realise sometimes when they just think, oh, yeah, that... You go up, people go up there and it's a breeze. Yeah, it's not the standard oh. of the Premier League. 
yeah, it was a better standard years ago when the Larsons were going there and the gas coins and all that. But you've got to handle every part of playing for that club or clubs like that. Or you're going to fail. If you're a nervous wreck and, you're, and, you're, and, and you start worrying about it and it starts to get to you, you'll fail. I mean, it's just, yeah. you can't tell people enough how you just don't walk in and it happens. It just, just doesn't work like that. I, I told my uh, I, I, my son played up there with Hamilton, Air United and Greenock Morton, not the biggest clubs. But you saw that hostile atmosphere when they went away. The things that were going on there. I, I always said to my son, if you survive here in this kind of thing, the pressure is on. And, and I, I, I can't just imagine Imagine how it's going to be with Celtic and Rangers. It's not about football. It's about life. It's about politics. It's about history. And yeah, uh, Craig, respect that you survived that. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.